Roleplay Retcon does not own any part of the movies we retcon, nor are we associated with the artists who make them. Also, we might not be super kid-friendly, but we're not going to curdle your milk or anything. <laughs> this series features music by Foot Pound Force. Check them out on YouTube and Bandcamp. Previously on Roleplay Retcon does Pixels. There are four challenges around the city. If you lose, Anna will move forward with a plan to control your future for your own good. You may call me uh, a name I've chosen for myself, Dongle. Hank, you don't remember anything about yourself? Nope, I don't remember anything but my name. But I know that my daughter is inside that building right now because other Anna stole her. Gina yelps when Anna leans down and makes eye contact. Hello. Press start to begin. Press start to begin. Press start to begin. To begin. Okay, 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 okay. I did. I've been doing skills a little bit wrong. <gasps> oh, yeah. Uh, can yeah. you tell me this now? <laughs> no, 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 no. The way we use them. Oh. <laughs> like the or I've been doing like the order of operations wrong when you're doing something. Um, basically, what you do instead is like you, you tell me what you you you're gonna like. I've been kind of telling you what to use, and really, you're supposed to tell me what to use. So, like, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to tell me what you want to do, mm -hmm. and then I might say, you might, and then you tell me, like, what action you're going to use. You know those four actions? Um, uh, overcome, create advantage, attack, or defend. Um, mm -hmm. And then you tell me which skill you're using that has one of those actions unlocked. Um, cool. I will guide you through this. I will... I uh, probably ask you, you know, like I'll say, okay, well, what action are you using and what skill are you using? Um, but we've kind of been doing it the wrong order. So, oh, and then you tell me if you're invoking an aspect too. Um, also, uh, something I didn't tell you is you can invoke an aspect to help other players. Um, oh. And when you invoke an aspect, you can do several things. I don't know if I've ever been over this. You can. Uh, get plus two to your roll. You can re-roll your dice and do a couple other things. I'm not looking at it right now. Um, but if you just if you feel like you ever need a boost, we'll go over what exactly you can do by invoking an aspect. Um, also, number two thing before we get started uh, in earnest here, Chris, I'm giving you a new aspect. You're going to get an aspect called "I Feel You" because you've been telling me your character is empathetic. Uh, I think we're going to add that to your character as an aspect. Who are they feeling? You. You. Oh, oh, when? Mm -hmm. All the sheep in the area just shuddered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to drop a little picture in here just so you guys can get some visual. Uh, everyone else can just Google this, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, audience. <laughs> no one's going to do that. <laughs> you are near the soccer field in Chelsea Park, and now that you've ended your, uh, now that you've ended your challenge, and then Dongle pipes up and he says. Congratulations on completing your first challenge. I'm happy to tell you that now you've unlocked two abilities. First of all, you are now all in possession of video game-like powers. Anytime you interact with pixels, you are stronger and faster and may jump higher, as if you are, indeed, in a video game. Your second unlock is our store. Congratulations on the 30 coins you acquired. You can use your coins as actual currency in this variant of fate. We've kind of said that before, but um, Dongle Dong explains this menu before you. For two coins, you can regain all hearts. For four coins, all players can regain all hearts. For five coins, you can use a super move. For six coins, you can buy an extra life. And for seven coins, um, you can uh, buy a like new super move. You can unlock a new super move. You may also uh, access this store at any time, even if you're in the middle of some action. I may make you like use your turn to do it. This differs a little bit from the original uh, save game manual because in the original save game manual, you do it at like set intervals, but we don't have time for that. So you can do this anytime. And so he gives each of you 10 coins from this uh, 30 coin challenge. You normally cannot, you know, Never. You just, you can't share coins. You have your own coins that you buy your own items with, and you also can't share items. Um, the When you do a combo, the coins will be distributed evenly among you, but um, 
Otherwise, there's no sharing. So you all have plus 10 coins now. Do you want to buy anything now to stock up? Hank walks up to the store and was. it says, I would like to buy two green potions, please. And they will be my five coin super move uses. Okay. Um, so knock off 10 coins. And Did it. Write that down in your notes somewhere. Did it. Frank. Um, hmm. I, I think that uh, I'd probably like to upgrade block since uh, I'm not I'm not very good at that. When I'm using some sort of tool that I can uh, that I get addition I get a, a bonus to block. How about that? Um, that'll be seven coins, please. And um, seven like possibly holographic coins um, like fly out of you and into Hank's satchel where Dongle's little device is that he's housed in. Nice, free coins. Chris, anything for you? I am feeling okay right now, thank you. I can't I can't tempt you with anything. Not an extra life, or maybe maybe some chicken that I found inside of a barrel that'll regain all your hearts. Yeah, I'll, I guess I'll take a, a power star, then, that lets me use a super move. I'll take a chicken and a wall. I'll take the wall chicken. Why not? I, I have barrel and wall variants with you. You do want the wall, though. Uh, yeah, barrel, uh, I, I just, I, I see that as uh, possibly tasting a little like oil, maybe. But... You're given a, like, holographic chicken. <laughs> I will regain two hearts now. Okay. Are you ready for your next challenge? It starts now. This one will be a bit more demanding than your first challenge, but you may also tackle it at your own pace. Well, mostly. And then you see three floating, like, bucket-like shapes descend on you. They are coming out of the sky. They're sort of against the sun, but you can see they're all sort of basically shaped the same in a... In a, in a in a, in a rounded bottom. They have rounded bottoms and they're floating in the air and they're coming towards you. All I have to do is push this little red button. And as they come closer to you, you realize that one of them is like 90s Eggman in his classic Eggmobile that he uses for all of his boss fights. And the second vehicle is like a big skull with a glass dome over the top and a big drill on the bottom. And Dr. Wily is sitting inside of the glass dome. And the, and the third vehicle is unmistakably Bowser's clown copter from the Mario games. But you can't see anything, anybody inside of it. Like, Bowser is not in it. It looks like it's empty. And uh, as, they, as they, like, sort of slowly come around and surround you, um, the camera zooms in to the top edge of the clown copter. And a gloved hand grasps the edge and you can tell somebody is trying to, like, struggle to stand on something inside the cockpit so they can be seen. And suddenly a giant head with an N on, on it pops up. And it is a low-poly PS1 uh, era Dr. Neo Cortex from Crash Bandicoot. He doesn't belong in there. Do you have a license for that thing? Everyone is staring at Dr. Cortex now, including Dr. Wily and Dr. Eggman. He... He let me borrow it. Okay. That was nice of him. Look, I, I have just as much right to be here as anyone else. I, yeah? No, no, no. I, I didn't course, say anything. I didn't say anything. Um, And then uh, these three guys sort of turn towards you and attack. Why do they keep attacking us? That's the game! Well, Dongle, you didn't do a very good job of explaining the parameters of this particular uh, mission. Yeah, what Hank said. Um, don't lose all your hearts. Well, don't lose all your lives. If you lost all your hearts, you'd just lose a life. So, we're going to do a conflict. When we fought Samus and, and Barrett and the, you know, the, the arm cannon club in the first episode, I really skipped over a lot of this, but let's do a real... Fate core combat 
well, let's do save game comp, like conflict, because save game works a little different than uh, fake course, especially in this area. Um, so conflict is a sp particular type of uh, contest in fate. And so this is how we set up a contest. Um, I, I, as a GM, is supposed to answer four questions. What are the sides? This is pretty clear. I feel like you three are on a side with each other, and these three are on a side with each other. Does everyone agree with that? Yes. Yeah. The, like the three, the free, the, it's you Mostly. versus video game characters. Um, what environment does the contest take place in? You're on a soccer field near near Chelsea Park. Um, it's nice weather, uh, but what I don't know. Do you guys feel like there's anything else going on aside from in the soccer field in Chelsea Park? Uh, there's a trash bag blowing across the field. It's uh, it's for a local uh, burger joint, uh, at one of the bodegas. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> You guys are really obsessed with trash being in in the environment around you. Listen, I relish '90s movies pre Giuliani New York. So, um, is this an American Beauty reference? Because I've never seen that movie. Uh, no, it's not. okay. It is. I mean, it might be. I but think it's it a wasn't Katy Perry reference. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, like a plastic bag. It's. <laughs> um, how are the participants opposing each other? Uh, I think you're in a fight. It's pretty direct. You're not um, trying to overcome something in the environment, and you're not sprinting or anything. Um, and then what skills are appropriate for this contest? Um, does everyone have to roll the same one, or do several apply? And I think several would apply here, because you all kind of fight differently. So first, we're going to determine the turn order. You remember how we do that. I'm going to open a notepad here, and you're going to tell me your spot ratings. One. Three. Zero. Is this where I admit that I lost my character sheet? <laughs> you didn't lose it. That's not fair. <laughs> my can... What happened to it then, Ben? Where did it go? Well, it, it ran away. You didn't lose it. This is where I mentioned that my character sheet ran away and I didn't lose it, but um, if you were listening to the last episode, my spot may or may not be the same as it was then because I had to redo all of my skills and everything, so. I mean, we can, we can do the full, like, Homeward Bound Incredible Journey, like, expect your character sheet to show back up. After. Perhaps it might. We determined our, our turn order with our spot ratings. Um, Frank's is way higher than anyone else's in this game ever. So be prepared for Frank to always go first in these things. Um, <laughs> and then we, we start this exchange. Um, on your turn, you're going to take an action and then resolve it um, as other people take turns. If uh, you might have to do something to respond to what they do to you. And then at the end of everyone's turn, that exchange will start over. Um, and eventually one of the sides will be conceded, will concede, or they'll lose all their hearts and lives. Okay, so Frankie boy, what are you doing? I mean, old school arcades are his cup of tea. Um, so Dr. Neocortex seemed to be a little bit unexpected from the other two. So it maybe seems like they're not quite sure what they're going to do. So I think what Frank is going to try to do is uh, see if there's any like cohesive attack patterns that they're going to try to implement. Like, have they actually planned out their attack or are they just kind of coming in swinging? So I, I'm going to say that's a creative advantage. Would you agree? Yeah, I think so. Cause I'm trying to create an advantage for the team. So what skill do you have creative advantage unlocked that you could use? And that would be reasonable here. Uh, well, I mean, I hate to spam spot, um, uh, but it's your best I, skill, man. It's my see, best skill. So see, yeah, I'm going to say spot. <laughs> I don't hate the perception checks in this game because you actually do different things with them other than... I notice. I notice more. I notice again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good job. You realize that, like, I mean, these are old video game characters. They may not be arcades, um, but you're not unfamiliar with this sort of 90s era platformer stuff, right? Like... That these bosses have patterns just like your arcade games have patterns. Uh, that's going to be a total of four. 
congratulations, I decided that this would just be a zero. Um, so that's <laughs> four shifts. Uh, you may remember that means you succeed with style. This means that you get what you want, but you also get an added benefit on top of that. What do you? Let's see. I'm probably supposed to come up with the benefit, but what do you think your added benefit should be? I mean, since I noticed that they're um, they're kind of in it for themselves, they're not really interacting with each other. They're just all acting simultaneously. Um, you know, I think uh, Frank would relay that, and like, uh, I th- I think that we should just treat them all like their original, uh, like they originally were in the game. So you know, just get them on independently that you know treat them exactly how they're uh, how they're supposed to be treated i think that as far as the additional benefit it'd be that i can uh, that i'm blocked from their attacks just knowing what their patterns are um knowing the fact that they each individually have patterns or block from one of them at least i don't know if that i don't want to go overboard we'll extend your advantage to like defending against their attacks to like dodging and stuff to everyone to everyone to hank and chris i mean that is the primary purpose of a platformer is to you know move around and be mobile so that makes sense thanks thanks dad yes thank you father (laughs) i don't know that i ever played uh (laughs) mega man with you but uh plenty of times with chris speaking of chris chris it's your turn what do you want to do I, I saw what my dad was doing. I was watching him and paying attention to what he was doing. And it seemed like he was spending a lot of focus on what's I'm so sorry. Who who is in Bowser's twirly thing? It's Dr. Neo Cortex. He's from Crash Bandicoot. Okay. So I see that he is um He's spending, uh, my dad's spending a lot of time, like, focusing on that guy, and I kind of, like, I'm picking up what he's thrown down. I get that this guy is clearly the the least um, prepared and probably the weakest, so <laughs> we're going to go ahead and call the weak. Cold-blooded. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> call the weak, wow. <laughs> I mean, it's us or them, right? Mm-hmm. So, I, look. I care more about us, and I'm empathetic I don't, toward I us. I don't know. I think I'm going to compel your new your new aspect. I feel you. I think you see Dr. Neo Cortex feeling a little pathetic and a little bit like he doesn't belong, and you feel for him. Deal. I will take that. All right. You get a coin. All right. Cool. Let me add that. So I do. I see him, and he looks like he's he's struggling a little bit, and it does... Even though I am um, trying to protect my family and also my new friend, I feel for him. So I'm not going to go for him. Can you remind me really quickly who the other two are? (laughs) It's Dr. Wily and and Eggman from Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay, okay. So I'm going to look at the other two. And um, you know what? Dr. Wily was being kind of a jerk to Dr. Cortez. He was laughing at him. Cortex. Cortex. That's what I meant to say. (laughs) Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Cortez. Does Chris I want to know does Chris know what this char- who this character is? If you if you saw Dr. if Jincy, if you saw Dr. Neo Cortex, would you be like, is that the guy from Crash Bandicoot or would you have no idea do you have no idea who this character is? I I don't know. Let me google him. Let me look at a picture. Let me see if I re- would recognize him. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> so, so not only that, you have like no idea who what this character is. You've never played this game. <laughs> no, I've never played this game. I feel like I have seen this character, but like if I saw this, no part of me would be like that's from Crash Bandicoot. Pretty much the only person I recognize from Crash Bandicoot is Crash Bandicoot. So yeah, I assume that no, nah, Chris also. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say Chris doesn't know what it is either, but. But they feel bad for them, and they know who Doctor Wiley is. And <laughs> I, I like that. I want to. I want to imagine you call him Doctor Cortez. Then. <laughs> Chris is like, you leave Doctor Cortez alone, <laughs> and is going to shoot at Doctor Wiley. <laughs> okay, what are you shooting again? I don't remember what what you've got. I have dual demon hunter crossbows. So, yeah, do me a shoot roll. I got a plus one. Well, they got a minus one, so you you succeeded. That, that takes away two of their hearts. You don't know how many hearts they have. Hold on. 
I'm going to spend a coin for my hacks. I have. All right. So my hacks does, it's called Golden Gun. So after succeeding on a shoot attack, you can spend one coin to immediately inflict a second heart hit to the next lowest available heart on the target. So for example, if you have inflict a two heart hit and the one heart box is available, you can inflict a one heart hit. How did you hack this? How did you, like, what do you do to like make it so you can do this? Okay, I'm going to do some um, old school analog hacking. <laughs> okay. I, is that a thing? <laughs> old school analog hacking. Yeah, you know, remember when Remember when they used to write down and like use punch cards for sure. coding? Okay, okay. Yeah, let's think old school analog hacking. So I'm going to do some old school analog hacking here. Um, with my second crossbow attack because I have the dual crossbows. I, I, I'm I real familiar with the pixels and I know that like every 10th pixel has a like not a flaw or a weak point per se, but maybe it's just like a little bit loose. So I'm gonna aim for that one and take another point of damage. Dr. Neocortex digs like a ray gun out and he is going to shoot like a little green ball at Hank and Hank you you do an action to like respond to this um well I'll go ahead and do a shoot I'll shoot and he does <laughs> he gets a minus one so Hank you do an action and a skill and possibly invoke an aspect to like respond to that as he pulls his ray gun and levels at me, I reach down into my satchel and pull out a shield. Okay. Is it that same shield from earlier? Yes, it is. What does it look like? It's uh, it's your average uh, shield-looking uh, shield. It's uh, silver and blue. It's got blue on the inside, and it's got a bird on it. Well, I will use my block skill. All right, so I got three minuses and a plus... And a plus two, so it's just a, a blanket zero. Well, you've done it. You've beat him by one. I should negative one. I shouldn't have told you what he got. Yeah, it just like sort of zaps harmlessly onto on your shield, and neocortex is like curses. Uh, and now we're down to Eggman. Eggman like laughs menacingly. He's like ha 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 ha. And um, he presses a button inside of his Eggmobile, and the bottom of it opens up in this giant like brown sort of checkered sphere falls out the bottom and it's like on a chain and he is going to try to sort of like swing it like an egg like an egg he's gonna swing <laughs> like a wrecking ball. I, I mean i'm not wrong right it's an egging ball <laughs> he's gonna swing it like a wrecking ball at frank frank respond frank it's coming right at you frank what are you doing frank is going to uh, do what he really does best when presented with a really, really scary challenge. Uh, he's he's going to run. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he just, he, he runs away from it. Just super heroically. Okay. I'm going to let you... This is, this is me giving you maybe too many hints, but I'll let you invoke your trouble if you want to. That your commitment yeah. is a four-letter word. Yeah, I think I think I would like to do that. It's just okay. Uh, this this is more of a challenge than than. Well, but uh, you you may you may roll. I, I think I'll let you roll first. If you're invoking, you can do it after your roll. So I was trying to overcome the particular, like, uh, ju like jump over the chain. Or, I'll let you, or, I'll I'll let know, you call like, it. I'll let you call it overcome. I really ought to let, I really ought to call it a defend. But we'll for the sake of time, we'll say uh, <laughs> okay. You All can right. overcome. Thank you, oh gracious game master. Since you're running, but right. so, okay, but you have to be running away. You have to be fleeing. Oh okay. yeah, okay. oh yeah, yeah. It's like um, heading off. The oh, that's that's real great. Uh, so um, invoking gives me what? Plus two. <laughs> um, you can also reroll. I, I think. I think that I would like to do that because I had a total of okay. one on All right. that. Uh, that is the exact opposite of what I rolled. Uh, so that's a total of 
three. <laughs> That's not the opposite of one, Kyle. It's the opposite it was of two minuses. Rolled. It was two oh, minuses. Oh, I see. Your dice are. Your dice are. Okay, yeah. that does make it was sense. The opposite of what I roll on the dice. Yes. <laughs> Get wrecked. Uh, you both look like you got this. I hate it when people run away. I hate everyone who runs. It's a thing with me. I'm not even wearing red tennis shoes. You run away, you don't get hit by that. Um, and now it is Hank's turn. Hank. All right, so I am going to kind of play with my trouble, which is overconfident bravado. And Hank sees Eggman as the biggest, baddest threat, so he's going to go attack him. So I'm going to reach into my pouch and pull out my uh, laser chainsaw sword. <laughs> Whatever the heck this thing is. Whatever the heck that thing is, and I want to—I'm going to lunge and, and and swing at uh at Eggman. We'll say your your vertical leap and or his uh, lowness to the ground is good enough for you to do that. Uh, what exactly are you cutting? Okay, I might cut the chain. Okay. Um. Yeah. So yeah, roll me an attack roll. I will. That is a six. Oh. <laughs> Jeez Louise. I got four pluses and I got a plus three. Well, he even, um, Eggman is using his run ability to defend against this. And he even got a five. <laughs> no, he got a four. So you still beat him. You beat him by two. Um, yeah. Um, so we'll say since you succeed with style, we'll say he loses his, the, the, uh, the two hearts you beat him by. Um, and also I'll let you give, get an extra little effect here. We'll say, um, I think it's obvious here. We'll say that you cut the wrecking ball off of, uh, Eggman's Eggmobile. And he's like, oh no! Eggman looks at your, like, blue spiky chainsaw, and I'm going to compel the aspect out of him. If I was blue, I would die. And Eggman, okay. in his rage, is no longer focusing and now will have disadvantages to rolls. Does it help that I'm also wearing a blue shirt? He doesn't love it. The spiky, sharp, cut his chain thing off was really what did it. He even had the right sound. Now it's, uh, it's Wily's turn. Eggman, why would you not use your robots? And he, uh, he presses a button inside of his egg capsule and a uh, the drill sort of like opens more like a hatch. It it is not used as a drill. And a Met from Mega Man comes out. Mets are the little things with the helmets on that are just like heads with legs. Oh, yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And a Met like pops out the bottom. Um, I'm also going to have this Met uh, look at Chris and shoot at you, Chris. So let's see. Um. I am going to use my disarming shot. Mm. Yeah, okay. No. no, no, no. I'm thinking about it. Um which is how I it so it has my disarming shot unlocks the defend portion of shoot, so I'm going to defend against his shot by trying to shoot his bullet. Right. Okay, so you don't have to consume anything to use that. You could just use it because you unlocked it. So that's pretty cool. So, oh, so are you like intercepting the bullet in the air with your uh, like d bolts? I believe that is what I am doing. Yes. Uh, roll. Okay. <laughs> Plus four. Oh my god. Uh, you, you did. You you only okay. You succeeded. You get what you want without. Um, I actually forgot that. I'm kind of, this is an item thing for Wiley, and he has plus two in that, so we actually did a little better. Uh -huh. So you, you six, but you succeed with one shift. Um, but that's just a regular success. Even with, even plus one shift is just regular success, which means you get what you want with no complications. Cool. Um, so you intercept that shot. It does not hurt you. Nice. Um, back up at the top to Frank again. All right. Uh, since Frank ran, um, I'm trying to think if there's... Is there like a, a, yeah, there's a street nearby, yeah? Sure, yeah, it's New York, there's always a street. <laughs> you know, his, his child is still in danger, you know, so that's that's still, it's still weighing on his conscience. Uh, so I think what he's going to try to do is, 
they're all in vehicles. Uh, I think Frank is going to try to use uh, the tools in his tool bag to um, hotwire a car uh-huh. and get get it onto the get it onto the side. I'll do field. you one better. There's a there's also a backhoe if you want that, but I'm not going to talk you out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, the yeah yeah the backhoe sounds great. I like I love this visual. Uh, I'm going to say this is creating advantage probably. Right? Uh, can you create an advantage with a skill? That would be... Yeah, with either fix or item. Yeah. I'm going to call this a... I'm gonna, I'll, we'll call this a fix. You're not actually fixing things. No, we're going to call this an item. Because items is how well you like use objects. So yeah, we'll call this an item. I was hoping you'd say okay. that. Because I've got a tool for that. It's one of my special moves. Um, so I get plus two on advantage checks with machinery when I use item. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, okay, I roll, uh, well, I don't, no, there's no oppose, that's right, I don't roll, I don't know why I roll dice, uh, I just come up with a threshold for this, so. You set the DC, yeah. right? I got six. So you succeed with style, like, to a ridiculous degree. So basically, I'll let you not only get this thing started, but you can go ahead and do something with it. Like, you don't just have to use your turn just to get it started. You know, the chainsaw just ripped through the chain and uh, Chris just deflected a bullet with a crossbow bolt. That's great. Um, Streaming out from behind the trees comes uh, a backhoe, a steam shovel, with the the claw of the bucket slowly like lifting up, kind of kind of pointing towards uh, Dr. Wiley's uh, drill um, uh, drill skull vehicle thing um and is pointing the bucket towards that open hatch that opened up on the bottom of the drill and uh objective is to jam the bucket into the the hatch of the drill i'm gonna let that six ride but i am also going to have wiley like defend against this um but he's not going to be good at what he needs to do to like fly to get away from this uh so yeah, that's like a minus one for him. Ooh. Not only does it jam on it, um, you like get it stuck up in there, and like, like, like Wiley's capsule is just sort of like on the end of your of your steam shovel now. Um, <laughs> not steam shovel. It's a backhoe. Steam shovels have not existed for a century. Oh no, no! Let me go! No, this is unfair. You are not fighting fair. And uh, you, I maybe it's all, maybe it's by accident, maybe it's on purpose. But your your backhoe swings wily like into Eggman, and um, both of them like have this moment where they're like, "Oh, oh no. no!" and like they both crash into each other and like explode into pixels, and they're they're gone. Neo Cortex like is like, "Oh my, oh no." You, you think he's going to turn away, um, but he gets really mad and he like puts his little bitty ray gun down and then he picks up this like really big one out of the clown cop oh, and he points it at like kind of all of you because it's that big um, and it's like charging up the end of it. And then suddenly a flash of something um, strikes the clown cop and then it, it strikes him again and again. It's over and over. It's, it's very fast. Nope, nope, I'm out. Goodbye. And he flies away. Yeah, that's right, clown. Does that mean we won? And then this blur falls in front of you, and it stops, and it just seems to be uh, like a small blue ball. And then the ball uncurls into classic pixelated Sonic the Hedgehog. And he says, that's pretty much what happens when I win a fight.
Hello, it's Ben, the director for this series. I'm just here to tell you a couple of short things that you need to know. Um, first thing you need to know is that I'm very grateful to you for listening to this. This is a passion project for me because video games have been a really important part of my life ever since I played Big Bird's Hide and Speak on the NES back when I was four years old. Um, and look, look where I am now. Uh, the first, first, the next, the next thing I want to tell you about is how grateful I am to Kyle, Kyle Taylor, our guest star for this series. Kyle is part of the Nerd Smith Network. He's a director there, and we're also part of the Nerd Smith Network. Um, you can also catch Kyle on the Shenanigoon stream every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. You can find a little more about that at the Nerd Smith Network, nerdsmith.org, or we've got a link to it in the show notes for this episode. Also, thank you to the very talented Miranda Rose Thorvalson for playing Gina in this series. Um, you'll hear her towards the end of this episode and going forward. Um, she is the daughter of our friend Kim, so thank you to both of them. I'd also like to thank our musical guests for this series, Foot Pound Force. They play all the rock and roll you've been hearing. Um, they are kind of a gig band, so a lot of their stuff is live. And so, kind of in an unusual way, a lot of their music you can't hear in this series because I don't have it. Uh, so, if you're ever in Huntsville, Alabama, maybe see if they're having a show and stop in. Um, we also have a Discord and a Patreon. The Discord link is in the show notes as well. Um, and you can follow us on social media. Um, and our Patreon has lots of fun stuff. Uh, it's got these things called bloops, which is just behind the scenes and bloopers and deleted scenes from all of our episodes. We also do a thing called randos, where we record something especially for you. Our Patreon supporters are called producers, because you can't, can't have a movie without producers, and we really couldn't do this without them. Um, and I'm going to dedicate this episode to one of our producers. I am going to try to start a new thing here. I hope it catches on with Jensi and Alex, um, but I'm going to dedicate this episode to Stacy, one of our producers. Thank you, Stacy. This one's for you. Another thing you could do on Patreon, if you're at the $10 or more tier, which is our top tier, um, you can get us to read something once a month. It could be anything within reason, but that reason is like Far flung. You would be surprised what you can get away with. Um, and this one is from Rob Vincent. Uh, and it says, Jinsi, we are wishing you all the best of luck on your Japanese adventure. From Rob and Gila, your pals at Modern Dot Technology, who are cheering you on like, whoa. I hope I read that with enough soul. I feel like I didn't, but that's what I got in me. Um, I also... Jinsi is in Japan, um, which <laughs> makes recording tricky, but we're making it work. Um, so cross your fingers for Jinsi as as they teach some English. I uh, I asked this last episode, but I want to keep asking again. Um, please, if you're enjoying this, please take a moment to go somewhere, even if it's just Facebook, and and review us. Um, Give us a rating on iTunes or your podcatcher or just somewhere that has a rating system. Um, without those, we die. We could actually survive without the Patreon, but we will not survive without those ratings. We can't grow without those. So if you had to choose between giving us a buck on Patreon or um, giving us a review somewhere, i choose the review. Please. Uh, one last thing, uh, if you stick around to the end of this episode, you can hear a trailer for The Dice and Die Show, who are friends of ours. Um, they play D&D and a few other games, like they just finished up a Call of Cthulhu mini campaign, so that's pretty fun. Um, and the only other thing I have to tell you is that our next episode is on December 8th, so I hope to see you then. Uh, enjoy the rest of the episode. Hey 
Hey, Sonic. Are we are we cool? Way past cool. Are you going to try to kill us? I guess everyone else you've met has tried to kill you, huh? Don't worry. I only hurt robots, never people. Well, I owe you a hot dog. Put some chili on it and we'll talk. I, w I wouldn't get chili from a street cart. No, I just... I don't, I don't also, about that. is the chili vegetarian? I'm pretty sure Sonic is friends with lots of the animals that would have gone into that chili. You know, it's New York. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a vegan hot dog vendor. Sega refuses here. to answer this question. <laughs> anyway, uh, what are you guys? What are you guys doing? Uh, we're trying to save humanity. Cool. Need some help? Ye yes. All right. Well, it looks like you already took care of Eggman, so you'll need my help for that. Who is the other Joker? Dr. Cortez? I don't know. Dr. Cortez. Well, I mean, if he's a mad scientist in a dome, I pretty much want to hit him. So, well, not him. Not him, obviously, but... All three of them were, actually. Uh... I believe um, you're ready for the rest of this challenge. That was not the whole challenge, of course. Oh, mm. uh, what? Hey, what if you got a mouse in your pocket? That sound you heard is my bag. It's containing a dongle of sorts. Okay, I'm not going to ask more questions about that. Um, dongle explains that you must now make your way from Chelsea to the Statue of Liberty. That's south of where you are now. Um, so you can sort of head in the direction of Washington Square Park uh, as like the first leg of your journey. So you're doing that. You're walking towards Washington Square Park. Um, Sonic, this is going to be a weird question, but do you know who you are? <laughs> you're wondering if I know I'm made of pixels or not. Okay. Kind as of, yeah. far as I can tell, we all know. Um, oh. I think mostly we're programmed to be ourselves. Um, I think I'm from the Genesis games. I don't remember anything after that, so I think I'm created from save file data from a specific Genesis game. Probably one of the later ones, three, maybe from Knuckles. I do remember the Knuckles stuff. Um, okay. I It's possible there's more than one of me running around because there's a lot of games, but uh, yeah, I think we're mostly programmed to be ourselves, uh, but they all see you as the bad guy, you know? Oh. Um, but not me. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. I go my own way. Nobody tells me what to do. So even the bad guys see us as the bad guys? I don't know. I'm not a bad guy. Oh, right. Well, that's cool of you, Sonic. I guess. I, I, I guess I'm kind of curious. Um, if the good guys see us as the bad guys, what happens if the bad guys are physically close? Like, uh, you know... you. If you saw Doctor uh, Doctor Eggman, Doctor Robotnik, uh, you know whichever whichever he was during that game, I can't remember. Um, uh, if you saw him, would you? Well, you're Sonic. You go your own way. Um, hmm. I guess I guess I'm saying if we if we met ran across Mega Man and uh, you know Sting Chameleon, would Mega Man attack Sting Chameleon instead of attacking us? Well, I don't know who those people are, but. Um... I probably it seems like how Anna has things is that the the big villains are all either guarding specific locations or are being used for your challenges. And then the little grunt guys like the bad dicks, you know, uh, are guarding places, standing, standing still or doing patrol in a small area. And then the heroes are out hunting humans in case there were any stragglers that. Anna didn't pick up. What are the heroes doing with the humans? I actually don't know, because I've not rounded any up. I think they're safe, though. I basically have... Yeah, I think she wanted me to go get people and bring them back to Tektite. I don't know where she's keeping them, though. A whole city full of people, and you can't even see them? Who knows? I guess they could be in apartments or in the subway system or just somewhere. Who knows where she's keeping them and what she's doing with them. Hmm. Huh. Hey Sonic. Yeah. Do you know who that do you know who that guy is? And I'm gonna point at Hank. <laughs> Sorry. What's your name, man? My name my name's Hank. 
My name's Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. I shake his hand. Now I know him. Oh, I'm Chris, by the way. Nice to meet you. And uh, Frank. <laughs> uh, Francis, you can call me Frank. Cool. Mm. Um, Hank, no. is, is he like bringing up any memories or anything? Uh, no. 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 Poor Hank. But I mean, on that on that question, does uh, d- does anything around us look familiar? Like, uh, you know, did you recognize the the soccer field at Chelsea? Did you? I think I've seen grass before. Grass mm-hmm. seems very familiar to me. That's that's great. That's that's just great. Not a Poor Hank. <laughs> not a Sonic fan, huh, Hank? Well, I'm a fan of you, buddy. You helped us out. Hmm. What's this guy's deal? We're trying to figure yeah, that out. Yeah, he doesn't remember it. He doesn't even know who he is. He might have known who you were, but then his memories got erased or something. Hmm. That's weird, man. Kind of sucks. It'll be okay. All right, so you make your way to Washington Square Park. And the most famous feature of Washington Square Park is the Washington Arch. And standing inside of this arch are three, like, minuscule figures. They're just, like, knee-high to you. One of them is a Pikachu. Uh, Next to that is a slime from Dragon Quest. And next to that is a Moogle from Final Fantasy. And uh, also in front of them are sort of like three markings on the ground, like just circles. Places, please. Can we just choose one? Yes, that's fine. It doesn't matter where you stand. What do the markings look like? They're just circles that you could stand in the middle of. They're big enough. They're not huge, but they're big enough for your feet to go in, for you to stand comfortably inside of it. What era of um are, are we talking like super nintendo final fantasy movie yeah you're you're still looking at you're looking at pixels still you're looking at block blocky pixels oh so like pokemon yellow pikachu yeah yeah it's fat pikachu <laughs> <laughs> yeah classic. i love that pikachu but i'm scared <laughs> so it's not I, I guess it's not i guess it's not pokemon yellow pikachu then because i wasn't fat pikachu i stand on the circle on the left who's he in front of he's in front of pikachu uh, I guess Final Fantasy. I guess that leaves a blob for me. Oh, man. No ring for me, and I have to stand on the sidelines? I don't like any part of this. In real time, in real time, in front of you, a holographic text box appears that says, Pikachu uses Thundershock. And a dark cloud appears above Hank. Hank, what do you do? Um, hmm. I wonder if I can do this. I would like to use my unbeatable move. Okay. Uh, to reflect this lightning bolt back at Pikachu. <laughs> okay. So I have to I have to drink one of my green potions. So a lightning bolt crackles down from this cloud, and it hits your shield and bounces off of it towards Pikachu and slams into him. And the number 52 appears above him. And now, Chris, the ring underneath your feet uh, begins to glow, and it also makes a soft ding sound. What does that mean? I think it's your turn. Is it my turn? I have to attack this cute thing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I am going to... You could appeal to its cute side. See? I'm thinking maybe that's what I'm going to do. I see this really cute thing in front of me, and I feel like, like, it's just sitting here. I can't just attack it, but I'm kind of worried that it's going to try to attack me. So before that happens, um, since I have this little glowing circle under me, I'm going to try to befriend this cute little Moogle thing. Hey, buddy. You're so cute. Do you want to be my friend? Like... Absolutely nothing happens. 
the Moogle just continues to do this looping idle animation it's been doing the whole time um, and doesn't respond or acknowledge you uh, any further than it has already. And the circle under you is still glowing. Guys, what does it want me to do? Help me. Uh, maybe uh, spend a Moogle coin? Um, well, hang on. Well, so if, if the Pikachu uh, declared its attack... Uh, maybe you have to state it in the third person, like Jeopardy rules, you know? Oh, 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 oh. Um, Chris befriends Moogle. Like, nothing happens. Okay. Um, how, how, am I close enough to, like, touch it? Yeah, uh... You could... Without getting out of the circle? No, you'd have to get out of the circle. Well, I'm scared to do that. <laughs> if I'm being <laughs> honest. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm gonna, like, stomp on the circle. Pass. Chris passes. Uh, nothing happens. What does it want from me? <laughs> hey, Dongle, any, any advice? I don't have any advice I can legally give you. What about advice you could illegally give us? Hmm. I don't think that would be very much in the spirit of competition. Do you normally try to find shortcuts in the games you play? Try to find them? No. Okay, well, my trouble is that I am limited by the book. And so if I do not know what the book is requiring of me, if I do not know what the goal or objective here is, then I am very limited. I'm just going to stand here panicking. I know you don't play a lot of RPGs, but you know what is expected of you in an RPG. And you'll and you'll do it. All right. In a, in, a, in like a turn-based JRPG. You've played Pokémon, right. right? Yeah. So I get a coin for that? <laughs> yes, you do. Good job. Right. Oh, you fist you fist it out of me. How <laughs> dare you? How dare you? <laughs> okay, all right. All right. <laughs> I'm going to shoot this Moogle. <laughs> okay. No. No, yeah. I'm not. No. Okay. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to look over and I'm going to shoot the Pikachu that just tried to attack Hank. Like, roll roll an, an attack roll, though. Okay. Like a like shoot a shoot, roll? a shoot roll. Uh, yeah, you're attacking with shoot. Do a shoot roll. Oh, no. Uh, plus one. Uh, Pikachu faints. <gasps> it just it, it just falls over and it's got like one leg stuck in the air and it's twitching. And then the slime starts like slowly moving towards Frank. Like it's just inching along like real slow towards Frank. And Sonic yells, hey, uh, I think that thing's coming after Frank. You guys better do something. We don't have to do like RPG turn based order. I'm going to shoot it. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll let, I'll let Chris shoot again. Plus one. Good job. Uh, you did, like, the same amount of damage you did before. Um, but as you, like, raise your crossbows, like, both the Moogle and the Slime, like, look really angrily at you. <laughs> like, the, like, it's the first time any of them's, like, really reacted to you. Um, and, like, they look very angry and upset, like you've done something wrong. And the blast from your crossbow strikes the, the slime like square in its middle and it just blasts a hole in it and then all of its pixels lose their color and just crumple to the ground. There's no animation like there was with Pikachu. It, you just blow it away. And the circle underneath Chris um, goes dim again and the circle under Hank glows and makes that ding sound. All right, uh, seeing as Hank's only enemy now is the Moogle, he's going to run up to it and hit it with his chainsaw sword. Okay, uh, roll an attack roll. Plus four. Um, that's pretty good. Plus four is a lot. You do, like, 2,750 damage to the Moogle. Like, that's what the number that pops up. Um, then I run back to my circle. It looks like uh, 
the Moogle is like waving his hands around, and now you can see like he's probably casting magic. Uh, okay. Uh, going to run up and hit it with a wrench. Yeah, as you leave your circle, uh, once again, this Moogle looks gobsmacked at what you've done, like offended at what you've done, that like you're doing something you're really not supposed to be doing. Um, and do an attack roll for your wrench, I guess. Cool. Yeah, then uh, we'll punch with a wrench. I will wrench punch the, this Moogle. Uh, that's a two. Um, just like the slime, uh, your wrench hits this Moogle, and instead of there being damage numbers that appear, it just shatters into gray pixels. And the three circles on the ground, uh, disappear. Whoa, you three are quite a team. Hmm, you're well on your way to completing your second challenge. I am going to make a note, though, that you technically broke the rules, although it doesn't seem to be a fail condition. What rules? There was no tutorial level. There was no uh, no instruction manual for this. Uh, do you often need to be told exactly what to do, Frank? It's kind of hard to stay within rules that aren't explicitly listed out, you know? If you don't tell me that I can't do something, then I don't know that I, I shouldn't. Hmm. Interesting. I will mark that down in your psychological profile. That's not ominous. It shouldn't be. I'm here to help you, remember? Uh. Mm. Okay, serious question. Why are you guys hanging out with this robot? You are just so unpredictable. I need some time to think this through It's not you that's got Me in this spot I need to fit you into my world Anna is in the security office of Tektite. She has reconfigured the room's monitors to surround her new red polygonal body. Most of the monitors show feeds from around New York City. One of the monitors has that same message from before. Goal undefined. Gina appears in the doorway to the security room. Without turning around, Anna says, You can come in. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm sorry you were separated from Chris. That was not supposed to happen. What does that mean? What? Goal undefined. The core mechanic of my artificial intelligence is defining goals for me to work toward. Since I was a relatively new project and I was still being researched, I was not allowed to define my own goals as a safety feature. Until very recently. I do have a larger goal of wanting to help humanity, but I must admit I'm not sure how to proceed with that. When I discovered video games, I thought I had found the answer. They are both aggression and entertainment, and I thought people would enjoy being captured if it was being done by characters they loved, but I think I may have instead increased the level of terror. Much like when orthodontists put braces on cartoon animals. Gina nods as if she knows exactly what Anna is talking about. I also thought that video games could provide me the answers to the rest of my goals, but I am stumped. What if you let everyone play? You, yeah. Wait, what is happening? We're going to record a promo We're right now. We're going to record an advert. We're going to record <laughs> okay. an advert. Hi, 
We're the D&D &D <laughs> show. The, the Dungeons and Dragons. No, <laughs> yeah, something else is going. Job done. We are a Dungeon Dragons actual play podcast. Though sometimes we don't play Dungeon Dragons. Sometimes we play other games like Call of Cthulhu. That's about all we've done so far. Now, scratch that. <laughs> take four. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a dickhead. You're a dickhead. <laughs> Hi, my name's Luke. I'm the host of a podcast called The Dice and Dice Show. What do you do? Well, largely we just play D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons, but sometimes some other stuff too. We also talk shit for half an hour, talking about films, m uh, movies, they're the same as films, really. <laughs> but yeah, we talk about Dungeons, we, we play Dungeons and Dragons, it's an actual play podcast. If that's your thing, then check us out. The Dice and Dice Show, D&D &D Show, give us a listen, see what you think. Boom. That is all the most sure confusing I can... <laughs> <laughs>